But I also, you mentioned an interesting thing where editors change the way they edit based on color. And now, mm -hmm. now I want to bring up John, the John Wick movies, because they are basically yes. Christmas tree decorations of films, highly saturated and incredibly <laughs> quick cuts. How do you guide an eye? The editors, it's you, traditionally the editor's job, but color is such a fundamental purpose in guiding the eye across the screen. How do you, in a, in a ballistically, insanely fast edited film like that, <laughs> help tell the story and still have such a kinetic, colorful, saturated experience? Right, that's a very good question. <laughs> because funny enough, that type of thing uh, can be very tricky, right? Mm. Well, first of all, Dan Lauston, he shot, he shoots those things masterfully. He's a, he's a master, so that helps, right? And then Chad is also one of those, Chad's the director, Chad Stahelski, also is an artist in his own right. He definitely has a lot of background in art and photography. So both of them together are very, fun group to be able to collaborate with and they understand totally when I want to shape things with power windows or you know take the saturation down on the left side of the screen and slightly darken it create a shadow so your eye goes to the right where you really want to see the contrast because something that's cutting really quick your eye picks up contrast before it will pick up you know detail right so if you have something that's dark um, light like so there's something backlit you're going to feel that motion more right yeah. or if there's something that's really really dark you want to be able to brighten the action brighten where where you feel the most motion so your eye will pick that up and go to it because there are some as you know dark scenes in john wick where they're at night you know running through wherever they're running you know that type of thing <laughs> and there's always a lot of practical or a lot of lighting that goes into that of course to be able to maintain that same kinetic energy like there's a lot of energy i always say in the john wick movies because there's so much color and saturation and and in contrast of just simply contrast built into the lighting how it was shot and then contrast in in the actual the color at the very end too like there's there's no like really soft contrast in in those movies because that tends to kind of in in that case lessen the energy if you have a softer contrast image right it tends to be a little bit almost like quieter music is you know yeah. it works better you know it's the same thing and, and so we we really do a lot of shaping with windows where we can ex accent sometimes we can just accent the lighting just slightly a very little bit goes a long way because because dan and chad together were very um you know, cognizant of that when they were shooting. And they always pick amazing locations too, which is so cool. It's so much fun to be able to color like, you know, every a concert in Rome or wherever they, they decide to, to shoot or a ballet theater, you know, all these really rich, decadent places that have so much detail. So what we do too, is we can accent that detail. Like if there's, you know, in this big theater, this big ballet theater, we really make sure that we can see all of the texture of the curtains and the texture of any kind of paintings on the wall or the carvings in the ceiling, all that kind of fun stuff. We really find all those little things to, to bring out and almost you know, create little places for your eye, help guide your eye around the frame, you know? So uh, it's, we, we use a lot of principle, or I specifically, and I've talked to Chad and Dan about this in sessions, do a lot of the same types of compositional ideas or compositional things that are traditionally used in paintings. Like usually in a painting, you know, your eye starts at the upper left and goes across, moves diagonally and ends, right? Almost like a Z pattern. Mm -hmm. Traditional art and art school, we always learn about how to keep your eye in the frame, right? So we do the same thing with when we're when we're coloring, same exact thing, and try to not, you know, have your eye like end over here. If the brightest thing is a lower left, we just balance the frame. It can still be bright, but maybe something else has to be, you know, balanced on the other side, or maybe we let it be bright because we want your eye to stay over there, you know. So we we play with all of that. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking about those films and what you're saying because like as you're talking i've got one of the first lectures i ever gave was about the use of color to help tell the story in john wick because mm -hmm. it, that movie just just the, it's oversaturated and overdone but it suits the story 100 percent so yeah. if you were saying 
Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it's like, it's like a fantasy in a way. Like he's just got this, you know, he's, it's like a surreal world. So the color fits it. Yeah, so if you, if you, do you ever touch the script, the script at all in, in post before you start or? Yeah, well, for John Wick, I didn't um, touch the script, but usually I actually work with Michael Fimignari, who was a cinematographer that I did uh, Haunting on Hill House, uh, um, a whole bunch of stuff. We're doing a few new shows now. We're doing um, uh, Midnight Mass, Midnight Club. I, him and um, Mike Flanagan is a director. I work with, with that team often. And I always read the script for, for that because those, those types of things, it's really nice for me to know what's happening, what's the mood, what's the story. And again, I work with Michael to be able to create lookup tables before he shoots, really to create that feel and that look. So I definitely uh, love to read the scripts. So for him specifically, I, I read all the scripts. Sometimes I get the scripts, sometimes I get the, the chance to read them. Sometimes, sometimes just we have a lot of conversations about the look and we talk about it, you know? So yeah, so I like to be in, to know the, the vibe of the show for sure. I think it's it's interesting that you said you didn't have the script script for John Wick because I think the color was so it amplified the story so wonderfully. But did you ever struggle to balance any other colors? Because I'm, I'm I'm guessing a lot of the color comes from practical lighting that then needs to be yes. taken over by you. Did you? What, yes. what was the experience working that way, balancing it? Was there anything you struggled with? Because especially in the first one, because maybe this color didn't quite work with that one, or wasn't so I actually yeah, oh sorry yes um so the first John Wick I actually didn't do so that one wasn't me the second and the third one I did and I'm going to be doing the next one too <laughs> next year it's coming out so um you know the, the there are there were times where we had to really kind of take away certain colors so it didn't start to feel too messy in a way it didn't feel too like certain colors didn't go well together so if we had, you know, bright blues and bright yellow and a bright red, we might take that, the blue and make it more cyan, you know, to kind of fit in with how it would work well with the other colors or the, the red maybe instead of having a blue or red, have more of a yellow red so that it, they all are more, you know, in the same family. So yeah. we did that a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's interesting. I'll stop talking about John Wick in a moment. It's just that, no, it's okay. Like I, I said, love John Wick here. <laughs> it's such a it's such a cool movie to look at, and also some of the choices in for color in the movie, like the magentas and those sorts of things. You don't see them in any other movie. Mm -hmm. That's true. The magentas, yes, the magenta. I personally love how the magenta has a lot of energy. Magenta to in in a, in a palette, right? And you don't usually see that color in in movies because a lot a lot of times it's almost too overpowering, right? Mm -hmm. But in the case of, of John Wick movies, since it does have such a high energy and it is just such a, like we have, you know, the freedom to do whatever we want. It doesn't have to be real. Like if you, if you look out at a cityscape, like this is some of the fun stuff, some of the New York big, you know, stuff. Like the last John Wick movie where we had like a lot of magenta during a car chase, we had the I think it was a Victoria's Secret sign lighting the actual road, right? Yeah. So that color, it's so much fun to be able to, to play off of it. And even like the big wide shots, we could, you know, instead of having just a, a cityscape that has just like slightly yellow or slightly green lights, we threw some magentas and blues in there to be able to give it, it just gives it so much more energy in life. We're taking certain windows and turning them from kind of a dull color to like a richer green you know you throw that green in there with some magenta and all of a sudden you have like a little bit of a color vibration going on a little mm -hmm. bit of that energy that happens and so we just will find places to be able to not draw your eye away from the the action but to be able to create to, to maintain that energy and maintain a little bit of that even that's like subliminal right that you don't even notice it's happening but you just feel it you just feel how it's it's just got that that energy. So we, we did a lot of that in those movies. 